Why does Islam forbid sex outside marriage? Everything in the world is composed of small units, just like a house is built with bricks. Likewise, society consists of multiples of a small unit, which is the family. Despite its dislike of divorce, Islam permits it as a necessary remedy when things go wrong. It encourages the preservation of the family because it is the most important institution in human society. Sex outside the marriage bond reduces the family into an institution that imposes unnecessary burdens. Why should a man fork out money and take on responsibilities when he can have his pleasure in casual relations that are easily terminated, just like one uses and discards a used disposable napkin? Nothing is more detrimental to proper relations and the family institution than the radical and polarized movements that marginalize the other sex. Feminist movements start with a premise that is contrary to the nature of women. They imagine that they help women when they advocate free and unrestricted sex. They call on women to behave exactly like men, regardless of the physiological and psychological differences between the two sexes. This has led to the emergence of a generation that considers the marital relation too restrictive, when it's the fundamental bond that promotes social security. This generation asks, why should one burden oneself with children and commitments? The question is, where does this lead us? The result is that 16% of world children grow up with only one parent. The figure is even higher in Western countries which do not encourage the continuity of the family. In the United States, the figure goes as high as 35%, which means that over one-third of the children in the most powerful state in the world grow up in an unhealthy family environment. 80% of such children live in families where the mother is the only parent, while their fathers leave to find other women. In Canada, the figure is 22%, while it's 21.5% in Britain. It is the children that suffer most as a result. Studies show that divorce and the breakup of family leave adverse effects on children as they feel unsettled, excitable, and unsociable, in addition to having problems with their studies. Islam describes marriage in intimate terms, as in the Quranic verse that says, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِقَوْمٍ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ Islam rejects the culture of free and unrestricted sex, which reduces the intimate relationship between husband and wife to something akin to a takeaway meal. It then aims to satisfy a transitory desire instead of being the result of a rational decision to form a life partnership. It becomes subject to a whim of a person who has taken too much drink. Court cases of rape show hard debate between those who consider sex under the influence of alcohol by one party as rape of the other, and those who consider it a consensuous act, saying that everyone is responsible for their deeds, whether they are drunk or sober. The debate continues even when neither party is drunk. Fierce contention continues in rape cases. The evidence that courts have to consider in these cases is not different from a situation in which the two parties are in consent. In today's fast food culture, it's extremely difficult for a woman to prove that she has not consented. Hence, the overwhelming majority of rapists escape punishment. According to statistics, the figure is 80 to 90%. To protect society from all these problems, Islam establishes clear boundaries, forbidding all sex outside the marriage bond. The Quran accurately describes the consequences of free sex. <laughs> Marriage is the only sound relationship between man and woman. 
in all situations where men and women are together, as in the workplace or other social contacts. Islam requires women to wear the hijab. It thus elevates the woman from being a sex object. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً 